Famous last words. Uh, I like those, right? Uh, movies and all kind of things like that where, where there's the big last scene, there's the, there's the famous last words. It's the big closer, the finale of everything. So we're, we're at a point where this is our last chapel, right? Uh, our last regular chapel. Next week we'll have something that looks and feels a little bit different and that's going to be great. But as far as kind of our regular chapels, as regular as this can be, th this is our last one. Now, I won't say that this is this this will be famous last words, but it will at least be last words. And so with me being me, what I started thinking about with that is I was like, OK, well, what were what were Jesus's last words? Right. Those of you who know me, hear me say this all the time. I'm always I'm always kind of thinking about Jesus and I look to him as an example a lot. So what were his last words? Right. We well, kind of had three, actually, in that there were three different occasions. There was the one occasion that we call the Last Supper. That was the last time he met uh, during his earthly life uh, with his disciples. And that's great to look to. Well, there's also the things that he said while on the cross, which I would encourage you to look to as well. I think there's lessons and blessings all through that. So that could be seen as last words, too. But then those those like me, what they really look to as his last words is I believe that his last piece of instruction wasn't on the cross because I believe he rose after the cross. And and there was there was this era prior to what we call the ascension. Right. And the ascension is when he is literally ascended to heaven. And during that time period between the, the crucifixion and the ascension, he met with and revealed himself to several believers. Um, and and they're, they're, the stories within that are fantastic. Uh, just to know the, the chapel message I didn't deliver that I prepared was called Scars. And it was about the fact that that all the, the way that he convinced both his disciples as a group and then later Thomas as an individual wasn't by the fact that he was resurrected, was by the fact that he still carried the scars. And I think that that looking at why he kept the scars, even though necessarily Frankly, he didn't have to. If he could defeat death, he wouldn't have to do that. I think there's all types of lessons there. So that's the chapel that we're not talking about today. Um, but looking at famous last words, let's talk about the ascension. So for the last time, Jesus is gathered with his disciples. And this is covered in a couple different places. It's covered in Matthew, Luke, and Acts that we're going to reference here in a minute. But looking to Matthew first, so they're all collected there. And this moment, to me, means a lot of similar things to right now. Uh, we're in a quarantine, right? Which all of you know, that's why I'm standing in my office by myself instead of standing before you in chapel. Things aren't quite right. Things aren't quite as we expected them to be. We're all a little unsettled. We're not quite sure either what's been going on before or especially what's going to happen from here. It's not shaping up to be like we thought it would be. Well, I think we have a lot in common with the disciples there. The whole crucifixion, if you read the story of the disciples before that, they, even though Jesus had been very explicit about how that was forthcoming, they still seemed very surprised by that. That that wasn't shaping up how they were supposed to be. In, in Matthew 28, just before uh, he gives what we will call the Great Commission, which I'll share in just a second, right before he does that and right before the ascension, they're still asking him about essentially like an earthly kingdom. They still think he's going to do something that he's not actually going to do. They don't they don't quite see everything and all the ends that are going on there. I think Jesus knows this. Right. But despite that, these are the words that he shares with them in this moment of uncertainty with his famous last words. When he had the last chance to speak to them, this is what he said. And I think that resonates very well with us today. What he did was he said, I am giving you my spirit, basically, which we call the Holy Spirit. So that's going to come. Basically, even though I'm not here, I'm still going to be with you. Even though I'm not present, I've not gone away. That was that was Jesus's way of, of sharing that with him. And then he says what we call the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all men. Right. So we're at the end of the school year. Right. Seniors talking to you, looking at you. This isn't ending the way you thought it would have. Right. It's it's not. I can see you being a little unsettled by that or actually a lot unsettled. It. I can see you looking around and be like, okay, so this is the end of this thing, but it's not like I thought it would be. And there's lots of things that I thought would be a thing that now aren't a thing. And I don't quite know what to do. And I don't not quite know how to process all that. Well, I think you have a lot of common with the disciples in that regard. 
And this is what Jesus said to them was, first of all, know that even though I'm not here, I'm still with you. I think that resonates with HCA and the things you've learned here, too. And also go and make disciples. Right. When I grew up in my little country church, Good Springs Free Will Baptist in Pleasant View, Tennessee, there was a little sign over to the side that said, go ye therefore. That's the old King James way of saying that. I didn't get that when I was a kid. I kind of thought that was weird that there was just a fragment up there. But but now I get it. And I really like it. Go ye therefore. That's the Great Commission. So seniors and even non-seniors, HCA students, that's what I would uh, compel you to do, too, is I, I don't like the term graduation. Right. I think I think the, that that signifies an end. I don't see this as an end. I see this as absolutely a beginning. I prefer the phrase unleashed, which I can't call it an unleashing. So I'm not going to do that. But what I look at with HCA students, particularly graduates, but even all HCA students is is we're not putting a period on the end of a school year and saying, OK, that stops now. What we're actually doing is we have empowered you and imparted you with knowledge and we are now unleashing you on the world. Right. And we are compelling you. Right. To go ye therefore to to take that knowledge and that knowledge of Christ and to spread that to every in, in the in all the ways that you can. Right. This is one of my ways. I'm standing alone in my office talking to a computer screen. But this is my way of sharing Jesus. I am going ye therefore. Right. So this is me living out the Great Commission to the best of my ability. So that's what Jesus does with his famous last words. But then he does something else. One of the things that it, that it says in here is that in Matthew 28, 20, he says to them, after I've told you, hey, go and do this. Here's your directive. Here's your command. And then he says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. All right. Now, now, I don't quite know what age he was speaking to, but I do feel confident that it is also applicable to this age. Um, and I feel that even in this age where there's all types of uncertainty and all types of questions that that Jesus is with us even to the end of this age. So the most common phrase in the Bible is fear not. Don't be afraid. Right. That That's what I would share with you right now is don't be afraid. Jesus is with you even to the end of the age, even this weird age that we don't quite understand and, and have a good grip on. Jesus is with you to the end of the age. And then it says that Jesus lifted up his hands. This is from Luke 24. In Luke 24, it says Jesus lifted up his hands and he blessed them just before ascending. I don't know what that blessing was. I don't know exactly what he said, uh, but I could follow his example again. I could lift my hands and bless you, frankly, if I thought it would do anything. But I don't. I don't I don't I don't have the ability to lift my hands and provide anything to you that you don't have. I have no supernatural abilities. I'm just a guy talking to a computer screen, right? But here's what I do have. I, I have Jesus, right? He, he is, Jesus is mine, right? It's one of the assurances that I have. And I think that, that our God is very clear that, that not only does he, does he want us to have him, but he wants us to share him. So here's what I do have that I can share with you. Here's the blessing I could offer. And I don't have to raise my hand to do it, or I don't have to do anything special. I can share Jesus with you, and I can say that Jesus will be with you to the end of the age, right? And that, that his support and his strength is, is enough for you, uh, for whatever it is that you're going through. And that what he wants for us is, number one, to know that. And then he wants us to go from wherever we are and to go ye therefore and to make disciples of all men and teach them about him and share him with them as well. So so the only blessing I have and I don't have to raise my hand to do it. I could, but I won't. The only blessing that I have for you is to, is to share Jesus with you. And I want to do that right now in a way that hopefully will sound familiar because because you've heard it before, which which is intentional. Uh, I like that you've heard it before and I would like you to hear it one last time. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go ye therefore.